This is the Accessibility Supports Training Module for Oregon Statewide Assessment System, required for all district and school test coordinators, as well as test administrators. This training is designed to provide an overview of Oregon Statewide Assessment Accessibility Supports, resources that support the selection, administration, and evaluation of these supports are also discussed. The Oregon Accessibility Manual, the OAM, was developed to guide the selection and administration of universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations for the current statewide summative assessment, including mathematics, English language arts, science, as well as social sciences, English language proficiency, the Oregon Extended Assessments, and the SEED Survey. Only those supports included in the OAM may be provided to students during the administration of Oregon statewide assessments. When selecting an accessibility support for testing, keep in mind that they should mirror the supports currently being provided to that student in their classroom instruction and assessments. It is never appropriate to introduce a support to a student for the first time during statewide testing. It is critical to know the differences between each tier of statewide assessment accessibility supports. Specifically, there are three tiers of support, universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations. Each of the three tiers of support have different rules for implementation. Universal tools are automatically available to all students and can be student selected. Designated supports are set in tide by test administrators and are available to any student based upon identified need. Accommodations are also set in tide by TAs and are available to students who have that support documented in their IEP or 504 plan. Within each of these tiers, any specific support may be embedded or incorporated in the testing interface, such as text-to-speech, or they may be non-embedded or outside of the testing interface, such as the use of scratch paper. For more details on each tier of support, consult Table 1.1 in the Oregon Accessibility Manual. A modification is any practice or procedure that changes the construct being measured on an assessment, such as changes to the content, the level of cognitive demand, or the expected performance or outcome. Any support that is not listed in the OAM is considered a modification. Assessments taken under any modified conditions are counted as non-participants in all federal and state accountability measures and reports. Having familiarized your student teams with the requirements associated with the use of the three tiers of accessibility supports, we turn our attention to some of the practical tasks involved in the process. The identification or selection, administration, and evaluation of accessibility supports. For those purposes, we recommend that teams consult the Council of Chief State School Officers Accessibility Manual, specifically Section 3, the five-step decision-making process, and the Tools section. The identification of whether a particular support is offered as a universal tool, designated support, or accommodation is determined independently for each assessment based on the construct that assessment is designed to measure. As part of the identification of accessibility supports process, ODE highly recommends using the sample test to familiarize TAs and students to the tests and accessibility supports. In order to enable any available embedded support in a sample test, a proctored test session will need to be set up. For directions on how to set up a proctored sample test, consult the online test administrator user guide. 
please note that it is never appropriate to initiate an operational assessment for this purpose. CCSSO's Accessibility Manual contains assistance in identifying or selecting various types of accessibility supports for students, including consideration of at least three factors. One, student characteristics, disabilities, language proficiency, accessibility supports used in the classroom instruction and on assessments in order to access and perform with academic standards and state test. Two, classroom instruction and assessment tasks. Knowledge about what tasks are required in instruction and on state assessments and ways to remove physical and other barriers inhibiting a student's ability to perform those tasks. Three, accessibility policy. Accessibility policy for an assessment or for part of an assessment and consequences of those decisions. Having identified the accessibility supports that each student needs, the next step is to ensure that these supports are documented according to federal and or state requirements. For example, in the Documenting Accessibility Support section of a student's IEP, there are potentially three areas in which accessibility supports can be addressed. First, consideration of special factors. This is where communication and assistive technology supports are considered. Second, supplementary aids and services. This area of the IEP includes aids, services, and other supports that are provided in regular education classes or other education related settings to enable children with disabilities to be educated with non-disabled children to the maximum extent appropriate. Finally, and most relevant to our purposes, the Participation in Assessment section. This section of the IEP documents the accommodations needed to facilitate the participation of students with disabilities in general, state, and district-wide assessments. On the following slides, we'll discuss the administration of accessibility supports. For accessibility supports to be used during administration of an Oregon statewide assessment, the supports must be previously approved by the Oregon Accessibility Panel, listed in the appropriate accessibility supports table in the OAM, implemented during instruction, and familiar to the student prior to testing. Once decisions have been made about providing accessibility supports to meet individual student needs, the logistics of providing the actual accessibility supports during state assessments must be mapped out. With the move to providing assessments on technology-based platforms, educators must make sure that students have opportunities to become familiar with the technological aspects of the assessment process. Prior to the day of testing, teachers should ensure that test administrators know what accessibility supports each student will be using and how to administer them properly. Adherence to guidelines detailing instructions and procedures for the administration of accessibility supports is necessary to ensure that test results reflect actual student knowledge. Test security involves maintaining the confidentiality of test questions and answers, and is critical in ensuring the integrity of a test and validity of test results. Test security expectations, therefore, remain intact for administration of accessibility supports. On the following slides, we'll discuss the evaluation of accessibility supports. There are multiple reasons to evaluate the use of accessibility supports. Collecting and analyzing data on the use and effectiveness of supports ensures the meaningful participation of students with disabilities in statewide assessments. Data on the use and impact of supports during assessments may reveal patterns of use that can inform future decision making. An evaluation may also indicate areas in which the IEP team Section 504 Plan Committee, or TAs need additional training and support. 
In order to identify systemic patterns, districts may decide to gather information on the implementation of supports during assessment from all schools. Finally, observations conducted during test administration, such as interviews with TAs or students after testing sessions, may yield information that can be used to guide future evaluation processes. Finally, the links to the resources listed on previous slides are provided here. This concludes the Accessibility Support Training Module.